In 1943, it was one of our strategic aims to draw as many German forces as possible away from the Russian front and French coastal areas and to contain them on the Italian peninsula while liberating as much of Italy as might be possible with the means at our disposal. As the bulk of our supplies was directed to England for the forthcoming invasion, operations in Italy had to be conducted on an extremely limited scale. Thus it came about that during the winter months, the number of Allied divisions in Italy was greatly reduced. Yet so determined was their effort that they succeeded in holding in Italy a very large number of German divisions during the pre-invasion period. San Pietro in the Fifth Army sector was the key to the Leary Valley. We knew it and the enemy knew it. We had to take it even though the immediate cost would be high. We took it and the cost in relation to the later advance was not excessive. By its very nature, this success worked bitter hardships upon each individual soldier, calling for the full measure of his courage and devotion. The response of our Fifth Army troops provides an inspiring page in our military history. To these individuals, living and dead, and to those who now continue in their tradition, this picture is dedicated. Valley lies in the Italian Midland, some 60 miles northwest of Naples to some 40 miles southeast of Rome. A wide, flat corridor enclosed between four walls of mountains. In winter, the highest peaks of the Leary Range ascend into the snows, but the valley floor with its olive groves and ancient vines, its crops of wheat and corn, is green the year around. That is, in normal times. Last year was a bad year for grapes and olives, and the fall planting was late. Many fields lay fallow. There are two ways from the south into the valley, one a narrow pass, the other a high scenic road over the mountains. They converge before the site of the ancient village of San Pietro, which for 700 years has stood at the threshold of Leary Valley, welcoming the traveler. The stones of its walls were quarried out of the parent hill from whose slopes it rises. Population 1412, the last census. A farming community. Patron saint, Peter. Point of interest, St. Peter's, 1438. Note, interesting treatment of chancel. From the end of October 1943 until the middle of December, San Pietro and the surrounding ground was the scene of some of the bitterest fighting on our Fifth Army front. The Italian campaign had entered its second phase, to push forward again after a static period brought on by heavy seasonal rains. Our battle lines were haphazard as the terrain itself, with its flood-swollen rivers that twisted back and forth across our line of march so that each river seemed like five. And where there was no river to cross, a mountain blocked our going, each peak ahead being a few meters higher than the last we had won, so that each new peak had to be fought for, the hard, uphill way, with the enemy looking down our throats. They had had time to fortify and camouflage their positions. 
No amount of artillery fire or aerial bombardment could force them to withdraw. That was for the infantry to do, employing those weapons that can find and destroy life in narrow trenches, caves, and fighting holes. It was up to the man with the rifle, the man under fire from all weapons, the man whose way all our weapons, land, air, and sea serve only to prepare. It was up to the foot soldier to attack a hidden enemy over ground that was sown with mines, the anti-personnel S-mines that fly up at a footfall to explode beneath the groin. Nowhere along the entire front were enemy preparations more elaborate than in the San Pietro area. For San Pietro stands at the threshold of Leary Valley, and through Leary Valley, wide and level, runs the most highly prized length of road south of Rome. By early December, we had taken were holding high ground to the northeast, east, and south of San Pietro, the Camino Maggiore hill mass being last to fall. An Italian brigade under Allied command had made a vain attempt to capture Mount Lungo, possession of which would have acted greatly to our benefit in the impending action. The Italians were all but annihilated. In view of their excessive losses, further operations against Mount Lungo's strategic heights were abandoned and it was decided to make a direct frontal assault on enemy positions in and around San Pietro. Elements of the 36th Texas Infantry Division were rotated from position to position overlooking the valley so the troops might study the terrain ahead from various viewpoints. Patrol activity was continuous. Day and night, units went out to reconnoiter the ground, draw fire, take prisoners, thus adding to the sum of our information about the enemy. High points, Mount Lungo's 351 and Mount Sumucro's 1205 and 950 were all manned in force. The town itself was strongly garrisoned with numerous mortar, machine gun, and heavy weapon emplacements. Four enemy battalions were dug into a line of connecting trenches and mutually supporting pillboxes in depth that extended from the base of Mount Lungo, northeast across the valley floor to the base of Mount Sumucro. Another battalion was organized to defend the high ground northwest of San Pietro. Areas before these positions were heavily mined and held a confusion of barbed wire and booby traps. On the afternoon before, D-Day and H-Hour were communicated to battalion commanders. December 8th, at 0620 hours, the 1st Battalion of the 143rd Infantry Regiment to attack the summit of 1205, having moved up the mountain under cover of darkness, and upon achieving its objective to attack along the ridge to a point northwest of San Pietro. The 3rd Ranger Battalion likewise to attack 950, another feature of the Mount Simocro hill mass. The 2nd Battalion of the 143rd to attack over the terraced olive orchards northeast of San Pietro. The 3rd Battalion acting in support to follow the 2nd at 400 yards. Of the original force to establish the beachhead of Salerno, the 143rd had since spent all but a fortnight in action under extremely bitter weather conditions. At Salerno, at the Volturno crossing, it had taken mortal punishment. The task ahead promised no less bloodshed, yet it was undertaken in good spirits and high confidence. The 1st Battalion began the long, rugged climb up Mount Sumucro. As night fell, our artillery opened up, and throughout the night hours, intense fire was laid down on the enemy's main line of resistance.
had rained most of the night, and it was raining at each hour when the 2nd and 3rd battalions crossed the line of departure. Some 200 yards forward, they encountered mines and automatic fire from pillboxes. Artillery were deadly accurate by reason of excellent enemy observation at Mount Lunga, overlooking our advance. <laughs> 